Hi folks, Restoration Trotter, another video. See you in a minute. Right, we're going to take a look at the steering box now on the old Trotter van, but just a little update here. Here's my first two t-shirts going out. Uh, one staying here in the UK, and the other one, quite a distance it's travelling, it's going to the good old New York, US of A. So they'll be on their way today. Sharon's going to package them up and get them out. So let's go out now to the log cabin, and let's have a look at the steering box on the Reliant Regal. Right, well, here's the Reliant Regal steering column and obviously steering box and I don't think they're very well made in the first place a lot of people I've seen uh, who have uh, tried to refurb these have said they're pretty grungy at the best of times so I don't know whether you can actually see that's quite stiff to turn that so there's obviously something not quite right in there I'm not too sure whether or not I think they're supposed to be filled up with oil because there's some sort of little fill plug here so um, what I'm going to probably do first is to Remove this end plate here, which has got three uh, bolts on it. And I think we're gonna get some fluid come out of there. And then apparently you have a, a lock nut up here and a, a lock washer with a tab on it. So uh, that can then be undone. Undo these four bolts and that then withdraws the uh, like the worm gear that's inside. So um, I've got to do some welding, let me show you. Well, as you can probably see there, that uh, bolt hole there is corroded away, so I was going to have a go myself with them filler rods. You know these filler rods that you can like braze aluminium back on together sort of thing. But um, what I might do, I know a local welder who does a bit of TIG welding and I might get him to just do, a, to do that for me. Or Gary knows a bloke anyway, so I might get that done. And as you can see here, that looks like some sort of a filler plug there. Uh, this is obviously a, an adjuster nut. There's the lock nut there. So that tab's got to be bent down. Undo the lock nut. It's very corroded by the looks of it anyway. So... Um, Ideally, what I want to do is to get this stripped down as far as I can and obviously get it in the uh, sandblaster to give it a good clean up. Coming around the front there, as you can probably see, these are just three bolts there. That wire there, I didn't realise what that was at the time, but that is the actual horn wire that goes to the horn right away up the column, so that's okay. I know what that is now. And as I say, the actual mechanism is yet to be seen. Apparently, there's a couple of bearings in here as well, so um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to see. So I'll just put you on a quick time lapse camera while I undo this and then uh, if something exciting happens I'll obviously stop the time lapse and then we'll come back and have a look see what the condition is inside so I'll see you again in a minute right well as you can see here I've just undone two of the bolts at the moment but uh, we've got some rather disgusting looking oil that's coming out of there so um, I'm uh, anticipating things aren't going to look too good in there there might be some wear in there so uh, I don't want this to flood out. At least there's some oil in there. It doesn't feel very good, though, when you turn the arm. As I say, it's very, very graunchy, so... Uh... Right, okay. As I say, it don't look very pretty in there. If I push that back up there... I don't know how far up the steering column this thing goes. Oh, here we go. Right, so... Let's just leave that there for a minute and clean this. There's a couple of uh, shims in there as well, which I've got to obviously put back on. There's three different shims there. I think they've got to go back because that stops the uh, preload on the um, on the bushings, I gather. So they've got to go back in, obviously. I don't know whether or not you can see in there, but there's a, a race of ball bearings in there as well. So. Um, not quite sure what to do there. What's this gunk here? Look, I don't know what that is. Some sort of uh, sealer there. I don't know whether them ball bearings are going to fall out or what. I'm not too sure. So I'll tip it up a little bit. I'll get some more of this oil out. And as you say, it's not looking a very nice colour anyway. So this is a job that really had to be sorted out. So one way or another, I had to strip it down. So. I'm going to just try and empty this out first and then I'll sort of come back to you. Obviously been in there for about 50 years, this lot I would imagine, never been apart. Right, there seems to be some sort of a collar there. Doesn't matter which way that goes in, it's not sided or anything, so... 
take that out as well. Bearings seem to be in situ in there, so that's not a bad thing, I suppose. So, okay, that's that. I've got quite a bit of that uh, fluid out of there now. Let's just have it tipped up one more time. Right, okay then, so that's what's under there. What I think I'll do now is just uh, clamp this in the vise now and um, undo this lock tab. This might be pretty tight, this washer. So I'm going to put this in the vise now, as I say, and then uh, we'll try and flatten off this, undo that little lock nut, and then try and sort of withdraw these four bolts and get this top off now. So I'm going to do that. Right, okay then, there we go. You can come in with me, we'll have a look for the first time to see what's inside here. There we go. Well, it doesn't look as bad as what I thought it was gonna look actually, so uh, that's probably a good sign. Now I think that, uh, now turning that now, it's really running quite nice and smooth. So I'm quite happy with that, but what I've also got to do now, which I didn't realise, was um, undo this nut here, get this off, and then you can pull this shaft out this way. So that's probably something I probably should have done first, but feeling that, it's a lot better than what I was expecting, so I'm quite happy with that. And I'm just wondering now if the uh, graunchiness was down to the adjuster, because that adjuster, obviously, when you wind that down into there, if this is wound down too tight, by the looks of it, it would produce this to go hard and stiff. So, looking at that now, that is acceptable. That is definitely acceptable. Look, I can move it with one finger, look. And there's no way I could do that before, so I was expecting bearings to be seized up. So there's a little thought for anyone there wanting to strip one of these down. And if I just wiggle the side to side movement without actually turning anything, look. There's virtually no play in there whatsoever. So that to me indicates that the steering box is actually a good one. I can see all the bearings are in situ on both sides and they're all moving. I think all I'm going to do here is give it a good clean out and fill it up again with the correct fluid and then tighten that bolt down, the adjuster bolt, down to its correct tension so that it's not graunchy because that is actually nice and smooth and as you can see there, look, the bearings are spinning fine so once they're in fluid, that should smooth all that out so yes, I'm very pleased I've done that well, that went with a ping, didn't it? let's get that shaft out as you say, I decided to actually get it out anyway, so uh I wanted it to be double, double sure that everything was going to be okay. Plus, I want to clean the casing, you see, so uh, I thought I might as well do it. That was tough to get off that, so no way you'd get that done without a puller, so you needed a puller to get that off. And everything seems to be in good condition there. There's the bearings under the, the, sort of the steering, the head of it sort of thing, so I'm happy with that. So all the bearings are in situ. They all look in good condition. And that's what you've actually got these two lugs for on the side of this arm, so to speak. So you can actually attach a pulley under there. So, yeah, not too bad. And it looks as though, where are we? If I take that shaft. Yeah, this shaft can only sort of go on realistically one way. So if you're worried about where to put the arm, there's actually, I don't know whether you can see or not, there's actually a couple of grooves either side there. You've got to uh, line up with the grooves in here. So basically get this in the correct position, what you think is correct position, on full lock and then plonk that on wherever the grooves are so it is at full lock and just before you tighten down obviously give it a, a turn to see that you've got full lock anyway so yeah that's what you've got there, that is spline so it's got big splines on it as well so they can't force it on the wrong way so okay then now I am going to clean things up and um, I don't think I'm going to be able to separate the actual arm out of there because it's got a pin going through it and I don't really want to have to uh, uh, drift that out I don't think no right I'm going to clean this up and I'll, I'll see you back in a minute
So, as you can see, I've given them a nice sandblast. Now, I'm going to give these a coat of paint. Now, I'm just going to stick to wire brushing this. Uh, the simple reason being, I don't want to take all the bearings out. And one thing you have to watch is that this is preloaded here. So, you've got that spacer that goes in there, as I said to you. And then you've got the shims, which also go on there. And then you bolt the whole thing down. Now, if you was taking one of these fully apart... All the bearings would uh, fall out if you take this end cover off because then this moves sidewards and in there as you can see there's the bearings and they would all sort of drop out so I don't really want that to happen because I know that this part of it's okay so all I'm going to do is reinstall the back end plate now that will re preload all the bearings so they don't fall out and then I'll just concentrate on wire brush it well cleaning this all out first of all with a uh, degreaser before I fill it back up with uh, oil and then I'll concentrate on just wire brushing this down because it's pretty much okay this to be honest with you apart from that repair which I've got to still sort out so um, this can be painted black as I said I'll probably just wire brush this down and uh, repaint that there's not really a lot I can do with that tube so that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to replace this end cap and then uh, put the mechanism back together and paint these couple of little bits which I've got here Right, I've just come outside now. I've done some painting now, as you probably know. I've got to let that dry now, but um, I'm going to pop around a friend's house. So I was talking to someone on Facebook yesterday. A friend of mine's got a Trans Am, and he's been having a problem with it starting. or well, not so much starting, but it'll start up fine. But when the car gets hot, it, uh, it won't start again until it cools down a little bit. Anyway, I was speaking to a chap uh, on Facebook called Simon. And hello, Simon. You did ask for a shout out. Here's your shout out. What initially drew Simon to my page was that um, he's been following the Reliant Regal restoration, the Trotter van restoration, and um, he emailed me on Facebook or sent me a message on Facebook saying that he was in the process of buying one and he's bought one and he's now going to do his own Trotter van. He got it for an unbelievable price. Uh, I think it was about £250, basically, so which is a real steal. And uh, Anyway, so that's how he got in contact with me. We got chatting online and uh, got talking about his, uh, I think his girlfriend had a Trans Am and uh, I mentioned that my mate had a Trans Am with a problem and then hopefully we've sorted out his problem. It's a common problem with the Trans Am is apparently the starter motor is very near to the exhaust manifold and um, apparently it's a, a problem that's uh, well known in Trans Am circles and one of the ways of getting around it is to actually insulate the Trans Am starter motor uh, with some sort of insulation and um, that's what we're going to do so I'm just going to pop around there now and tell him that right so as I say a lot of people have been going on about my pond well we're actually in the process of draining it down as you can probably see all this stuff around the outside is drying off now but we've had rain it keeps filling back up again I've still got to pump the last bit out and all this sort of sludge that's in there I'm going to actually keep that and that's going to be feeding the uh, raised beds and uh, all the planting stuff that we've got over there so I've not forgotten about it, it's just that we've not had the time to do it and it's in the process. Isn't it you two? Shall we clean the pond out? Yeah. yeah? What are we going to do, Emily? Hey? We're going to clean the pond out or what? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. What's that hat you got on, George? Ninja Turtle. Ninja Turtle? Do you like Ninja Turtle? Okay, mate. Well, I'm going to go because Granddad's got to go out now, yeah? Right, well, I might as well leave this one there because I was going to get the video up and get the box back together, the steering box, but... I've got to let paint dry and stuff like that now, so I just wanted to get this video out anyway. So it's out now. You're going to be watching it very shortly, and we'll do another one when we come to refit it all back together. It's just a matter of reassembling it the same way we've taken it apart, basically, with new oil inside. And uh, hopefully, I'll, in the near future, we'll be having another Reliant Regal one. I've got the Triumph still to do, as you know. And anyway, that's enough from me. I'm rambling now. I'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Thank you.